Hello people, yes this is a Stellaris video and not an EU4 video. I recently started getting into Stellaris and it's a fantastic game with some great game mechanics and event chains that kept me interested and enough replayability which makes me want to keep playing it. Starting as a total newbie can be a bit daunting though as is the case for most Paradox games. So hopefully this little weapons guide will help you out. Before we get into this guide, full disclosure, I am not an expert on this game. But I found sometimes a fresh perspective from a newbie helps explain the mechanics better to fellow newbies. So let's take a look at weapons in Stellaris. The weapons in Stellaris are actually not super complicated. I keep seeing questions about them on Reddit and on forums though. It might be because there are a lot of different weapons loadout you can choose from. But the basic concept of weapons in Stellaris is fairly simple. We'll start with two major categories of weapons, kinetic and energy, and then we'll come back to a couple of other weapon types that also exist in game. The main thing you want to remember about kinetic and energy weapons is that kinetic weapons do more damage to shields and are countered by armor and energy weapons do more damage to armor and are countered by shields. That's it. That is the key takeaway. And you can really stop watching this video right here if you want. Don't though. Now if you don't want to keep that information in your head, you can just mouse over the weapon and see the tooltip. Here the red laser says it does minus 50% damage against shields and plus 50% damage against armor. So if the enemy ships have more armor than shields, you will want to put more energy weapons in your ships. Another way to remember it I found useful was thinking in terms of League of Legends damage. I'm sure at least some of you are familiar with League of Legends. So. Stellaris armor is armor, the shields are League of Legends magic resist, kinetic weapons are AD damage and energy weapons are AP damage. It's a fairly simple straightforward analogy right and a quick way to remember. So let's do a quick rundown of all weapons in game and evaluate when and where they are useful. Kinetic weapons are good against shields and are countered by armor so you should use them more if the enemy ship has more shields than armor. Mass drivers are the most basic type of kinetic weapons. The game starts with mass drivers and you can research higher tiers of these weapons in coil gun, rail gun, advanced rail gun and gauss cannons. The higher tier weapons do more damage, cost more to build and cost more power. But all of them will have the same fire rate, same accuracy, same tracking and range. And all of them do 50% more damage to shields and 50% less damage to armor. Next are the auto cannons. These have a higher fire rate or lower cooldown as it's called in game compared to mass drivers. They also have higher accuracy and higher tracking. However, they do slightly less damage. Personally, I like using these in my corvettes. There are three tiers of auto cannon, the auto cannon, ripper auto cannon and stormfire auto cannon. They do 50% more damage to shields, 75% less damage to armor and 25% extra damage to hulls. Since they are really ineffective against armor, you need to pair them up with something that can damage armor. I like using these auto cannons in my corvettes along with a guided weapon typically. And we'll get around to looking at guided weapons in a bit. Next is the kinetic launcher. These are kinetic battery and kinetic artillery. They only fit in a large slot and do a lot of damage from a longer range. However, they have zero tracking, so they are very ineffective against enemy corvettes or ships with high evasion. They are twice as effective against shields, half as effective against armor and 25% more effective against hulls. I like using them in my backline artillery around early to mid game when I get my first battleships. These are the main weapons that will eat away at enemy ships shields. However, these kinetic launchers are replaced by mega cannons and later giga cannons. Mega cannons are just bigger kinetic launchers. They are not as effective against shield as kinetic launchers but they more than make up for it by doing substantially more damage. These only fit in the extra large slot so they can only be used by battleships and juggernauts but as soon as you research them, these should be the main shield killers in your fleet. And those are all the kinetic weapons in game. You start with basic mass drivers which are only useful early game. Later you get auto cannons which I like to use in my corvettes as soon as I get them and I use mega and giga cannons on battleships. And these kinetic weapons will help you take down shields on the enemy fleet. Energy weapons in game are the lasers and they are effective against armor and countered by shields. The basic lasers are the counterpart to the basic mass driver kinetic weapons. The game starts with a red laser and there are four more tiers to this weapon type in blue laser, UV laser, extra laser and gamma laser. 
The basic lasers do 50% less damage to shields and 50% more damage to armor. They are also a bit more accurate when compared to mass drivers at 90% accuracy. Again, these are the basic energy weapons and we will only use them early game until we unlock better energy weapons, such as plasma launchers. These launchers are plasma throwers, plasma accelerators, and plasma cannons. They are twice as effective against armor, 50% more effective against hull, and 75% less effective against shields. They are decent weapons, but I rarely use them in my ships. They seem kind of middle of the pack weapons, which are useful in a very small window. Then there are particle launchers. These are proton launchers and neutron launchers. These ones do 50% less damage to shields, 50% more damage to armor, and 75% more damage to hulls. They are fairly powerful and only fit in the large slot, and I like using them a lot. I will basically fill my battleship with neutron launchers as soon as I get them. They have a very high damage and a long range, and if you have something shooting down enemy shields, these launchers will take care of the armor and hull rather quickly. Then there are the extra large energy weapons. These are lances, particle lance and tachyon lance. They do double damage to armor, and since these are extra large weapons, they can only be used on battleships and juggernauts. They are fairly strong, but since you have limited extra large slots, I like filling up my battleship slots with Giga Cannon. So my typical strategy is to have Giga Cannons take down the enemy shields and Proton Launchers take down armor and hull very quickly. It seems to work most of the time. And that's basically all of the kinetic and energy weapons in game. Now let's look at some other weapon types. There are some penetrating weapons in Stellaris. These weapons ignore all shield and armor and do direct damage to the hull. So if we get back to our League of Legends analogy, these penetrating weapons do true damage. They have full shield and armor penetration with 100% accuracy and a fairly decent tracking. However, they do substantially less damage compared to their kinetic and energy counterparts. Also, they have a wide range of damage, which means the damage will depend on dice rolls more than usual weapons. Over the course of a long fight, it will average out, but still, the RNG factor is something to keep in mind here. We have disruptors that fit in the small and medium slots. These are three tiers, disruptors, iron disruptors, and phase disruptors. I have tried making disruptor only corvette swarms, and I don't think they work as well as I thought they would. I think the final damage output is just not enough. There are also extra large penetrating weapons, arc emitters, and focused arc emitters. These have pretty decent damage, but again, the damage range of 1 to 1700 is a bit too dependent on dice rolls. I do like using them on some battleships though. I have found them to be useful against late game AI or end game crisis fleet where they have an obnoxious amount of shields and armor. Explosive weapons are the ones that fit in the guided weapon slot. These are the missiles and torpedoes. They have fairly high damage, 100% accuracy, decent tracking, and they completely ignore shields. So explosive weapons are fairly strong. However, they are hard countered by point defenses. While these explosive weapons have high average damage per day, if they get countered by point defense, they do zero damage. So you need to make sure the enemy ships don't have point defense systems on their ships before using them. Explosive weapons are of three types. You have the normal missiles with five tiers, nuclear, fusion, antimatter, quantum, and marauder missiles. These have 100% shield penetration and do 25% more damage to the hull. Then you have the bigger missiles, the torpedoes, with space torpedoes, armor torpedoes, and devastator torpedoes. These are just bigger missiles. They do more damage overall, and they are 50% more effective against armor. However, since they are big and slow, they are countered more easily by point defense. I like using these in my corvettes actually. I typically don't have that many point defenses on their ships, and these high tier torpedoes do a lot of damage. There is a third type of missile called Swarmer missile. These are Swarmer and Whirlwind missiles. They are smaller in size, and so they have more survivability against point defense. However, they also do far less damage, and they don't have any extra damage on armor or hull. On paper, they look good as an option against smaller enemy ships, but I haven't been able to find a good place for them in my fleet. The final weapon types are strike crafts. These are small, super fast space planes that can be put in a ship with hangar slot. Strike crafts also ignore shields and do 50% more damage against armor. At a glance, their average damage per day seems fairly high. However, people have done some testing and that average might not be accurate. Each hangar slot deploys eight strike crafts and each strike craft will spend some time evading the enemy point defense or enemy strike crafts. And so the exact damage calculations get complicated. 
They do have 100% accuracy and fairly high tracking though. Strikecrafts also act as a point defense systems themselves and they will attempt to shoot down incoming enemy missiles and enemy strikecrafts. And they are countered by point defense and flag guns. Strikecrafts are fairly good, especially in the current patch. They tend to do better against ships with less evasion though. I like putting strikecrafts in my defense platforms and my juggernauts. And lastly, there are point defense weapons. Point defense is good against incoming missiles, while flag guns are better against incoming strike crafts as they have better tracking. There are also giant titanic weapons which are DLC logged if I understand correctly. You can't really change these weapons, but they do a ton of damage and will form a major part of your alpha strike around mid to late game. And that's all the weapons in Stellaris mostly. I did not cover the event based weapons as they are mostly situational, something like say energy siphon can be used to take out shields faster, a corvette fleet with energy siphon and missiles can be a good option, but most of these will get outdated once you unlock higher tier weapon techs. Amoeba flagella can be used in place of strike crafts early game, there are a few more event based weapons you can get and I might do a separate video on them later. The whole idea behind making this video was to get you familiar with what the weapons do in a broad sense. The idea is that you want to have specific weapons on your ships to counter the enemy ships. And always keep in mind the importance of alpha strike, which means maximizing damage on that first hit. If you can take out an enemy ship or do substantial damage on the first hit, you will have a better chance of winning the battle. In the next video, I'll try to explain how the combat mechanic actually works in Stellaris, what all the numbers on the ship designer screen actually mean, and how the damage is calculated in game. I hope this little video was helpful for the newbies of Stellaris. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to leave a comment down below. You are watching a radio res guide. Thank you for your time, and I'll see you all in the next one.